Hi Aries, this is your single and ready to mingle uh, love reading for 2018. And um, the reason I just said 2018 is because I don't know if I'm going to be doing these regularly and I just wanted to kind of keep it open. But obviously um, there's always a chance that I'll do them again at a later date. But um, I very quickly created a spread for this. And um, as I said in the first sign that I did, what I'm doing here is kind of um, looking at it from the perspective of if you're single, why is that? And not saying, oh, you know, what are you doing wrong? Although there may be things that are happening on your end of things that you're not really um, addressing, aware of, that can prevent you from finding that special someone. Because it is too easy to fall into this um, sense of like, oh, it'll never happen, why isn't it happening, and kind of getting antsy. And for Aries, then what happens when you get antsy? You know, first of all, it's very easy for you to get antsy. And you become pushy, you know. You try to force the issue. If I could tell Aries anything to improve uh, on it would be to not try to make things happen so much to just lay back and let the other person take the lead you know because you are a cardinal sign you're a fire sign you're very enthusiastic and you're very forward looking and the, and all those things conspire to make you rather uh, impatient <laughs> and then of course the other person can feel uh, rather rushed or just irritated. I know, I'll tell you one thing, if you ever come across me, because I have, I, I'm a Sag, so I'm a fire sign, but I have Taurus rising. I can't stand when people try to be pushy with me. It does not, I just like dig in my heels. So don't even go there. So, and I'm sure there's a lot of people like that. So just to um, kind of um, look at it from that angle, and I am using my Wild Unknown Tarot, which I'm uh, really getting a kick out of. Still haven't figured out. Sometimes I'll stare at a card and I'm like, okay, what, which one is this card? So I'll tell you what each card represents in the spread when I get there. Ah, there's another uh, reverse card. I thought I wasn't gonna get any more of those puppies. Ooh, that's cool. I love the full card. I really do. Okay. And then the fourth position has two cards. So I will pick two cards. This, uh, that's funny. I, I can't wait to show you. Some of these won't be in frame until I uh, show you, but it's a funny, it's a funny card. <laughs> And um, okay, so let's put this up a little bit, then you can see it better. Okay, so for the central challenge to finding love for you at this time, I have the I love this card. This is the Eight of Pentacles. And so what this simply means, Aries, is you may just be very involved in your career and your what you're doing. Um, the Pentacles, it's more about the job you're doing. So um, this kind of connects with training of some sort. Uh, I would even say like if you were in some kind of um, apprentice program or I would say even as a student, but um, it, it, it can be just somebody who is very involved in their work and they're working very hard and um, they're seeing results. So it's not like they're just slaving away. But this is, this is a very common situation in modern society where people don't have the same social network and work is kind of central to their lives. Another possibility is what I hinted at earlier, 
the idea of trying too hard and tr you know right at the very beginning you meet someone I don't even like to use the example of being in a bar but that you know that's kind of like a common place where people might meet each other I'm assuming even now and let's say you see someone and you find them attractive and you go and you start talking to the person and maybe the person's shy or maybe they're not sure of your intentions and they kind of um, are a little bit standoffish and so rather than taking their lead you double down and you become more aggressive because now it's it's um, it arouses within you the challenge of trying to con conquer this person so that's what I'm talking about. At the very beginning, do you come on too strong? And can you temper that? Do, you know, can you see that within yourself and be able to tone it down? So we're going to look at a, the history of why this is happening. And um, this is the Four of Cups, and it's in the reverse position. I'm going to just put it upright just so that I... Don't put it back in the deck um, in the reverse position. Um, actually, I think that in some cases, the four of cups in reverse may be a good thing. And um, it's possible that your uh, work life is indicative of you being on an emotional upswing. Because being in a rut is what I associate with the Four of Cups and maybe being indifferent about life. And if you have found work that really engages you, that may simply be um, because um, that may lead to you being absorbed in what you're doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is, obviously, we only have so many hours in a day. So these kinds of so-called challenges are not really that big of a deal. It's really more about logistics. And as I mentioned to someone, I think that changing where you meet people can be, make all the difference in the world. So rather than you know, saying, okay, Friday nights or Saturday nights are the place where I'm going to go out and I'm going to meet someone, you might on Sunday morning go to a spiritual center, go to some kind of a lecture or a, um, you know, like a, uh, a workshop or something and you can meet somebody there. And at times, and maybe it's on a weeknight at some kind of a, a center where it's non-denominational or even if it's a certain religion, but it's something where it attracts people from different walks of life. And you might feel find somebody that's more aligned with what, where you're at. How do you heal from, from all of these things, these challenges that pre present themselves to you? This is the, the full card. And you can see that they have um, depicted it as this duckling, I guess. And it's this early stage of growth, okay? Um, the, the Fool card is a major arcana card that talks about embarking upon a journey with no destination. And I can totally see Aries doing this in life. Maybe if you were to like literally go on vacation, I could see you like saying, I don't want to, I don't want to belong to some tour. I want to do things on my own and I don't want to have a schedule. I want to just play it by ear. And in your love life, if you maintain that spontaneity and that sense of wonder, it will, I think that will help you immensely. And I would say this to anyone, not just an Aries person, but I know that a lot of Aries people can resonate with this because um, what happens, I think this is another trap of the cardinal signs like Aries, is that the temptation is to try to control the outcome. And when you feel like you're not getting what you want, a cardinal sign like Aries can start to try to control things. They can start to try to order people around. They can start to try to maybe even manipulate or, um, you know, throw their weight around. 
Uh, that's what ordering people around is. And this is a, a poor substitute for personal power. When you feel like your life is aligned, you know that all you have to do is show up for it. You don't have to do a certain thing or say a certain thing. You just have to show up for your life and really want what you claim that you want. And by being the fool, uh, the zero, the unknown quantity, it's wiping your slate clean, not living in the past. And I think Aries is very good about this, actually, of just um, going out like a babe in the woods and trusting the universe that you will be shown uh, what to do, where to go, and that's where you, you will meet the person of your dreams. Okay, so we got two cards talking about the who, what, when, or who, what, what I, I said, who, what, when. But, you know, this could be the people, this could be anything. So this is the card I said was so funny, the Nine of Swords. See, like, this is so um, gothic or gruesome. Eyeballs and worms. And actually, this Nine of Swords connects with... Um, with uh, anxiety, if you were just to translate it uh, or, you know, interpret it in a typical spread. But because for this one, it's supposed to denote actual people, I would say your opposite sign of is Libra, and that's one of the swords. And the number nine can connect to that because that's the time when the sun goes into Libra. So, if we look at it from the Libra perspective, we could also be talking about timing when there's going to be a full moon in Libra, which is the second blue moon of the year on March 31st. What is significant about March 31st? Well, it's when the sun is in your sign, when you're having your solar return. Whenever there's a full moon, the sun is in the opposite sign. So that might be a timing issue for you if it's if you're not meeting a, a person who is a swords. And the other swords are the Gem are Gemini and Aquarius. And then we have the Ten of Swords. And this is another kind of a dark card, and it relates to feelings of betrayal. Now, um, there may that may that card may indicate that someone from your past who you had a maybe a, a negative ending um, will show up again. We are having a Mercury retrograde also in at the end of March, around that same time that I'm talking about, around the time of the vernal equinox, okay? But the other thing, too, is that... Um, oh, gosh, I, was, I lost my train of thought. It had to do with... I mean, you know, it's almost like doubling down on this idea of Libra because that's the 9 and 10 months are when Libra, the sun is in Libra. Okay, so that might be kind of really emphasizing that this is the person that you're going to be with. But, um, you know, there's also the possibility that something has is still in your vibration that is dealing with a former relationship and maybe you're not healed properly yet and when you get that because number 10 is the end of a cycle when you get there then you can be like that fool and you can go ahead into the unknown and have a blank slate but maybe you're still kind of bogged down in it i'm not saying that you're involved with this person but in a way you are because it could still be on the emotional level or the mental level, especially the mental. These are both swords, so it's like those thoughts, obsessive thoughts about something. The outcome is another very, uh, this is a minor arcana card. This is like the Page of Cups, the Daughter of Cups. And so to me, this is almost like the companion piece to the Fool card in the minor arcana because um, the Page of Cups is like that babe in the woods mentality where you're trusting. And usually I'm, I'm pointing out that there's a downside to this where the person may 
be too trusting and that causes them to lack discernment and pick the wrong partners. But in this case, because of that Ten of Swords, I think that you're going to heal. Uh, water energy is connected to the cups and that can be a very healing influence and you are ready and I would even like I get this springtime vibe from this as well or early summertime so that might you know indicate when this is coming in for you you are so powerful during the spring because of that solar return time and even after that I mean that's really your element is in that March and April period and that's when everything is awakening in life and that's why you know Aries is the first sign of the zodiac it's just associated with um, that newness and so I see that for you a new relationship a new but it's on the the, the emotional level Aries which is so great not just a passionate thing like a fire energy which would be more um, maybe physical attraction, but this is an emotional connection with somebody. Okay, Aries, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Have a wonderful uh, awakening. Take care. Bye.